Okay, this is the Lenovo ThinkPad orientation for grades three through five. Your laptop is a ThinkPad Yoga 11e. And what ThinkPad, the brand, says is that it's rugged and ready for students and versatile for the way students work. Our agenda with this orientation is some basic device information, the expectation, acceptable use, digital citizenship, and any questions that you have at the end. So for the basics, I found a three minute YouTube video that covers some of the basics for the Lenovo ThinkPad, ThinkPad Yoga 11e. And I borrowed this from Mr. Keel at the Carlisle Area School District. Hello everyone, this is Mr. Keel from the Technology Department. In today's video, I'm gonna explain a few of the exterior features on the new student laptop. The new student laptop is a Lenovo ThinkPad. It's the Yoga 11e model. This was specifically designed for student use. The reason it's called a, a yoga laptop is because it can be placed into four different positions, kind of like yoga positions. The first one is a traditional laptop position. You can also flip it back, turn it around, and put it into a tent position. If you flip your tent over, you have a presentation mode and then this also turns flips back the whole way into a tablet. While I have it in tablet mode, I'll just point out a few things. Right here you have a little Windows button. It doesn't really look like a button, but when you touch it, it does work and it, it toggles you back and forth between the desktop and the start screen when you're logged into Windows 8. There's also, you can see the camera up here. On this side of the laptop, you have your power place to plug in your power supply. If you're going to hardwire this, you plug it in right there. This next port is a super speed USB. You'll also notice there's a little battery symbol next to it, which indicates that you can use this to charge a smartphone or some other device that can be charged using a USB cable. Next to that is a combo um, headphone and microphone jack. And down here we have a media card slot you can plug in things like a digital camera card. On the other end of the laptop, right here's the power button, a volume up and down button, another super speed USB. This one does not have the battery symbol, so it's not intended for charging. Next to that is an HDMI port, and that little hole there is simply a spot to lock the laptop. They sell cables that can be inserted, combination code can on the end of it, they can go into that and you could attach this to something to secure it. Inside the laptop has a touch mouse with a left and right, right button, a standard keyboard. Uh, one nice thing is when you do flip this back into presentation mode or into a uh, tablet, the keyboard is deactivated so that you know, for example, it's in tablet mode. If I bump the back side of it with my fingers, it won't push any buttons. And these are, you know, I believe these are a pretty durable laptop. It's an all metal case, metal hinges. Um, the corners have rubber on them to help protect it. You know, of course, you want to take good care of this and not drop it because, you know, we nothing here is going to prevent damage if you drop it, but it should hold up pretty well for you. Thank you. All right, with the different yoga positions, make sure you're using two hands as you switch from laptop to stand or tablet in tent. And also make sure you pay attention to your teacher's expectations. They may not feel that um, an assignment you know, should be in tent mode, like while you're working on an assignment. They may want you to have it in tablet or laptop, so make sure you follow those expectations. If you're having problems with your device, first thing is try restarting your laptop. This solved so many of our problems last year. Make sure you turn it off every night, let it rest, and be sure to update your laptop. This is something that your teachers can show you how to do. Uh, I wouldn't have the whole class do this at the same time because it does take a little bit of time. If you're still having problems, come see us in the library. Um, there will be times when I'm busy teaching, but our fabulous clerk, Mrs. Pagini and Mrs. Oxendine are prepared to help you with them as well. If they cannot solve the problem, they will have a little sheet to fill out um, with your name, date, and some information. Um, we do need your password in order to get back into your computer and help solve those problems.
if they do ask you to fill it out, make sure you fill it out nice and neat so we can actually read what's going on. Okay, expectations. This device, this laptop is an educational tool and that is all you will be using it for. Now, I love educational games and I imagine you do as well. So if your teacher assigns that, like that is A-OK. -okay. But just playing games on it just for fun with no education, um, educational reason to be doing it is not acceptable. Okay, um, you have to have this device agreement on file, which means you have signed it, your parent or guardian has signed it, and your teacher has signed it in order to have a laptop checked out to you. This is not just for you to take it home. This is to have one checked out to you, period. Um, as you sign it, make sure you read all of these bullet points listed here and then get that signed. I do have a lot of yours from Open House, so thanks for getting that done. Okay, this next part of the presentation is the acceptable use policy, and this was by Ms. Hudson, the librarian at Westwood. So thank you, Ms. Hudson, for sharing. Okay, every time you um, are gonna log onto a computer, you click this OK button. Teachers do it too, and what that means is you are agreeing to the school district's acceptable use procedures. It's a contract. You agree to follow these rules, okay? The network should be used for research and educational purposes only. Um, appropriate school conduct is expected when using the computers, the network, and the internet. No cyberbullying. Students will be supervised at any time. Um, we can check and see what you are researching, what you are doing on your computer. <laughs> Keep your passwords secure. We're not going to share those with our friends. Now, a lot of times teachers need to keep um, keep track of them. That way, if you forget it, we're able to get that back to you right away. You'll report any material that you find controversial, inappropriate, or offensive. Just let us know what's going on. You must follow copyright laws. That means we can't just get on the computer and borrow any pictures that we want to or any songs that we want to. We have to have permission. And when you do a Bing image search and it says it's under Creative Commons, these pictures like they have allowed us to borrow them. So being image search is a really good place to um, borrow pictures. Um, you must follow social media guidelines over here. Oops, I didn't right here. Sorry. Over here you have um, your emails. First name, last name at usc475.org. Just like all of ours. Unacceptable use may result in disciplinary action, which are like consequences for not following the rules. You may have cancellation of your privileges, like not allowed to get online. Um, if the acceptable use policy says there could be detention, expulsion, or legal action if it's like something severe. <laughs> so sending, posting, or downloading electronic messages that are abusive, obscene, threatening, harassing, or cyberbullying. So we're not going to, you know, kind words only, that's what it's saying. Using the network for commercial or financial gains is inappropriate. If you damage a computer, electronic media, or the network is inappropriate. Vandalizing the data of another user, or like hacking. Using someone else's password folders or files, like just keep your information private. Unauthorized use of copyrighted materials, for instance, what we talked about where you're going to use Bing images, but you also can't just download a song that you like to use in a project. Um, back to the songs really quick. Um, I do have a bunch of free music that we are allowed to use in our presentations, and as we do that throughout the year, I'll show you where those are. See? Uh, don't share anyone's personal identification. Like, that's something we'll talk about a lot this year with our digital citizenship lessons. Keep your personal information private. Oh yeah, so for digital citizenship throughout the year, um, your teacher will sign up for these lessons and we'll talk about how to be good digital citizens. Um, taking care of your equipment, hiding your password, internet safety is a big one, netiquette's also a big one, and just being kind on and off the computers. Any questions that you may have, you refer to your handbook. Um, everyone should have received one of these when they signed their device agreement. It has a, like a light blue cover on it. 
Uh, you can also ask your teacher. And you can also ask me if you see me, go ahead and ask. Or you can also email if you have any questions. Veronica Waite at usd475.org. Thanks, guys.